Baldy, it is, uh, it's BT, no Sal today. He's off. How you doing, buddy? What's happening? Hey, Brent, it's good to be with you. You know, it's just, uh, it's that buildup. It's that slow buildup from Championship Sunday to the Super Bowl. So we're all kind of caught up in it right now and the analysis and, you know, everything that they got to get done. So I'm in a good spot here. I'm right at the finish line, Brandon. Yeah. I, yeah. I couldn't ask for a better place. I'm with you. We're all there. And, it, you know, nice to get a little respite here and then got to consume it with, with craziness as we get to the Super Bowl, just gradually work up to it. Um, did you have, going into Conference Championship Sunday, because you kind of look at it a couple of different ways, like, to have Detroit get there would be a great story, but to have the Niners Chiefs battle again, like there were so many different possibilities that that were that were appealing. What did you actually want to see happen on Championship Sunday? Mm, you know, I mean, I actually what you just said is kind of how I looked at it. I go, you can mix and match any of these four teams. We're going to get a great game. I mean, obviously the starved Lion fans. Um, I mean, they 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 would be crying. They would be crying in Las Vegas with tears of joy. You know. The Ravens getting back there with Lamar. I mean, I, but honestly, San Francisco and Kansas City feels good to me. Um, you know, I mean, we're looking at a, a real live uh, dynasty right now of Kansas City. Like, we don't see these in sports very often. Obviously, the Yankees had their day, and, you know, you, you, could, pick, you could pick certain dynasties, the New England Patriots, uh, the Golden State Warriors, but this is a real dynasty right now. Yeah. And so now San Francisco – Right and Shanahan's never won a Super Bowl. He's gotten close. Like, does he, does he take down the dynasty and does San Francisco begin one with Brock Purdy and what they're doing out there? So I don't know. There's, there's a, it's a good storyline. Uh, Andy Reid might go down as the greatest coach of all time if he keeps this up right now. Ooh, wow, the Belichick stuff. That's that's a pretty good take right there. Really? Well, I mean, look, you you, you, you you've got a quarterback right in his prime. I, I know Andy pretty good. I know him since the day he got the job in Philadelphia. It's not like you know he's anxious to go play golf or go hit a vacation spot. I mean his his life is give him a quart of Hagen Dazs at night and give him a couple of uh, you know uh, pens and let him go tinker up with yeah. the game plan. That's that's what he loves doing. Wow. You know, a read from a distance, you know, he didn't seem overly joyous after the game, and he didn't seem like he was walking. Is he health? Is he in good health? Well, he had a, a major knee replacement surgery that didn't go well a couple of years ago. Okay. Uh, they literally had to take the, the replacement knee out, and he had to, like, let the – he had it infected. Uh. And he had to, like, let it let – it, he literally didn't have a knee joint for months. Wow. Well, he let the infection heal, and then they went back in and redid it. So he walks with the limp, but, you know, the, the mind is sharp. He never, he's never needed much sleep, much rest. Yeah. Like, his, the mind is very sharp, but the body's probably like a lot of us, Brandon. You know, it's not exactly what we were 10 years ago. You say that again. We're talking to Brian Boldinger, <laughs> BT, and Sal on the fan. I'll, I'll get back to Mahomes here. See, Brock Purdy's interesting to me, and, and Sal and I were debating this yesterday, actually. Like, if you give Brock Purdy an, off, an average offensive line and an average offensive coaching and concepts, is he special or is he just a product of the system? How do you grade him? Well, what quarterback is going to be great with the parameters you just listed? If you wrote Brock Purdy with the Jets or the Giants this year, they have a losing record. Now, if you do yeah, but, that don't, but, with, but, but, but Boldy, once, but those aren't even average O lines; those are horrendous yeah, offensive right. lines. Yeah, you're right. Okay. okay. I mean, no, no, but I mean, I think Brock Purdy could be good in in a lot of systems. Um, it just happens to be San Francisco. Could he lead Baltimore to a championship? Yeah, I think so. It, could he lead uh, Detroit? The way, you know, Jared Goff was leading. Yeah, I think so. Like, I think the guy's a quality player, and he proved it in the second half. And I've watched every one of his games, uh, Brandon. Like, I, I don't understand the criticism. I don't understand even the game manager thing. Yeah. Like, I see the guy make great plays in every game. Me too. Me too. You know what I think it is? I think that a lot of people who are reluctant to stamp him a star or more than a game manager, maybe somewhere in between is a better way to put it, I don't think that they can disassociate his draft status with, with his play. No doubt. There's no doubt. I mean, if he wasn't Mr. Irrelevant, if he wasn't six foot and 210 pounds and looking like just the average guy next door, if he didn't have any of those intangibles that are attached to him, you'd, you'd say this is a cold-blooded assassin right here. Yes. Because that's how he plays the game. Like, he plays the game with no fear, and he's exceedingly calm. Like, I mean, the guy is just – he looks placid. But at the same time, like, that guy 
will put, you know, he'll just, he'll stick you right in the crowded artery every chance he gets. <laughs> That's well said. All right, so we're talking to Brian Boldinger, Insider Coles, brought to you by the uh, Old Spice Gentleman's Blend Body Wash, providing exfoliation plus 24-7 moisturization because men have skin too. I do want to take you back to Lamar. I got, I got to get your thoughts on this. Like, uh, the legacy stuff is a little played out, quite frankly, going back to Peyton and Brady and, and LeBron and some others. But, you know, Lamar, what kind of a knock does he take? Lose at home, AFC Championship game, didn't play well, going to win the MVP. I mean, he's got to drop a few slots. How do you process Lamar's bad loss? Yeah, look, I mean, he's got to live with it. I mean, he's going to travel with him until he erases it. You know, I mean, it, it traveled with Peyton Manning. He couldn't win a national championship at Tennessee. The quarterback the year after did. Um, you know, he was two and four in the playoffs to start, and then he, and then he became Pey- Peyton Manning. So this is just this is how quarterbacks get evaluated, Brandon. It's fair or not fair. Kurt Warner tells me all the time: you either have big game genes or you don't. And it remains to be seen if Lamar does. He's going to put up tremendous numbers every year and statistics because he's a, a freak athlete. Uh, and he has improved a great deal, but these championship games, not everybody gets to win them. You got to play your very best, uh, when you need the very best. And he didn't provide that on Sunday. Uh, and so like, it's just going to travel with him until he can erase it. But it's one thing to lose to a legend like, you know, Mahomes and, mm-hmm. and others, but like, there's like the drop is so precipitous from regular season play to just really horrendous, um, almost unidentifiable production. Like, we're like, who is this guy? He completely changes. Yeah, well, I mean, he hasn't been in there that often. You know, he's been injured. He's still very young. He's 27 years old. Like, he's got a long time. He's got, uh, you know, he's got a lot more years in front of him to change all of this. And so that's what, you know, if I'm Lamar, I'm, I'm going to work on all this stuff. I'm having my receivers down in South Florida. We're going to, you know, we're going to beat man coverage next year if we see Kansas City or a team that plays that style. And so, you know, I, I expect him to take a little time off and get to work and work on some of the weaknesses that we just saw. i got to ask you something about Dan Campbell. That's Brian Baldinger, of course, uh, Baldy once a week here on the fan, BT and Sal. And, you know, what he said post game to me, and I'm not a coach, but it seems like something you'd say before the game. Like, for those who missed it, he said, guys, we, we might not ever get here again. I don't know, Boldy. Wouldn't you say that to the guys before they run out of the field and, you know, just to inspire them and have them just, you know, knock helmets and go bonkers? The purpose of saying that after the game is what? Uh, well, um, we, ha- we, we should have won it, and we didn't. So, you know, we have to live with it. Uh, you know, look, there's the, 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 the decisions on fourth and two in the third quarter where you could go up by 17 – with and still be up three scores with you know seven minutes left in the third quarter like that to me was just the easy play the fourth and three in the fourth quarter I think he was just chasing points you know but I don't care what kind of success they had you just got to live in the moment of the game and kick that field goal on fourth and two at the 28 yard line in the third quarter I think he I think that you know that just all it did was contribute to the momentum that the 49ers were just growing with and building with and we all felt it watching it. And I think he felt it shriveling away from him. And I think, you know, he got caught up in the emotion of it. Almost everybody's pointing the finger at Campbell. I'm going to make a case why I've got his back, but you're the guest, so I want to give you a chance to speak, and you know a ton more about football than I do. Because most people believe that Campbell messed up, couldn't, does resentment grow in the locker? I know that they love him now. But if you feel like your coach so egregiously messed up and cost you maybe a championship – very least a Super Bowl appearance. Can guys begin to resent that over time? It happened in Seattle with Pete Carroll when he threw it on fourth down, you know, with uh, yep. Beast Mode behind her. I mean, that that was real. Yeah, That was real, and there was real resentment, and it, it, it carried. It carried with a lot of players for a long time. Wow. Uh, they felt like, you know, they, had, they should have won their second straight Super Bowl. Maybe they became the dynasty and the legacy and all that kind of stuff. So it can happen. But, you know, Seattle had already won a Super Bowl. They were going for number two. So I think, you know, that was part of it. Okay. But here's why I got to defend Campbell. And I get it. You know, the way you just boiled it down to kick, you know, kick the field goal. Okay. Well, the other things that happened, first of all, the multiple drops by Reynolds, they were well-designed yep. plays. He was open. They dropped mm-hmm. an interception. They dropped yep. a touchdown. That would have been a great catch, but it went right through his arms in the end zone. They had a pump that they could have downed at the one. Instead, they messed around. They got their foot in the end zone touchback. Like, I understand the criticism, but – they still should have won. Like, I don't know. If Goff got sacked, 
I would understand the pushback on on going for it. The plays were right. there. Yeah. No. Look, I mean, it's, you're not wrong because it's never just one play. Uh, I didn't think actually the fourth and two in the third quarter. I didn't think it was a very good play. Now, yes, Josh Reynolds should catch it. It's not an easy catch. He's got to like twist his body around, get his hands on it. Yep. It's not easy. But I didn't think the play was a good design play. Um, mm-hmm. to be honest with you, it was like if you look at all the other routes, like they weren't, they weren't open. And I didn't know what they were designed to do. And the fourth and three play that they went for, I mean, there was real clear confusion on exactly what was supposed to happen on that play. That's why Goff ended up rolling out and just basically throwing it in the dirt. So if you're going to go for it, uh, and Ben Johnson's a quality offense coordinator, and they had a great deal of success on fourth downs between two and three yards all year long, like over 70%. But I didn't think the plays were well designed. And that's really the one question. If you're Dan Campbell and you go, okay, fourth and two, what do you got, Ben? What's the play? And he says this. I, I thought they, they, I've seen them with better plays than that. Hmm. Let's say Mahomes wins this one, and I already said I gave it away early. I, I just I don't think he's going to lose. I think he's going to get another one, make it three, which will be the same as Brady six years in. Do you believe with a win that he surpasses based on the timeline of 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 you know the or the middle stage of going down to the greatest of all time, eventually surpassing Brady? Well, it'd be hard to argue against it. Um, you know, six straight conference championship games, uh, four Super Bowl. If he gets his third, I mean, the first team to win back-to-back since Brady and the Patriots in 2003 and four. So 20 years have gone by since the team's been able to do it. He does it. I mean, the legacy and all the accomplishments within the legacy in seven years just continues to stack on top of each other. And so uh, it, you can't have that conversation without putting him in that conversation. Yeah. All right, so let's uh, finish up with a little local slant here with Baldy, Brian Boldinger, that is uh, our NFL Odyssey insider. Jets and the Giants, I mean, come on, man. I don't don't just feed me because I'm desperate, which I obviously am as a Jets fan, but like, how realistic is it to expect Rodgers to show up week one, good offseason, train, get ready, and resemble Aaron Rodgers? I mean, is this possible? I guess it is. None of us know. Um, my, but my, my gut feeling says that the older we get, the harder it is to look like you did when you were even 38. Forget about 35 or 33. Like, none of us are just ageless. And, you know, even last year in the off season, you know, he pulled a calf muscle. He did. And he was on the shelf riding a bike for three weeks. Like, these things, they don't stop. They generally don't stop. You know, Brady, I mean, uh, Brady played with a torn MCL like for an entire season. Nobody knew it, Mm -hmm. but he still played through it. But these things happen to older athletes. And to think that you can just stay uh, healthy in this sport when we saw all these guys get hurt this year and that you're just going to, you know, that's not going to affect you. It's kind of, it diminishes as you turn 40. Mm. I mean, the arm's still there. But, you know, even his last year at Green Bay, he was, he was good. He, he wasn't vintage Rodgers, you know. Well, he just Rod- wasn't. The, the, arm can, the arm can still be good. Yeah. It's just the reflexes. The reflexes aren't the same. And let's face it, like these decisions are made in a nanosecond where, you know, wall, where the ball is going to be released. Can the reflexes still be as sharp as when you're winning the MVP of the league? Like, I don't know. But, I mean, it, the, the, the odds are that it's, they're not going to be as sharp. And while the arm strength, I mean, Brett Favre can still throw a football, yeah. you know, yeah. for, you know, through a, a car wash. But at the same time, like, does he have the reflexes and the eyes and, you know, just the, the suddenness that you need to avoid a sack the way we see Mahomes do it week in, week out right now? I get it. All right. Something on the Giants here. I'm going to wrap it up with our buddy Boldy, BT and South here on the fan. The um, I, I'm not even going to ask you the likelihood of of you know, Daniel Jones being ready week one because it's a pure guess. You're not his doctor. You don't know his body. But how likely is it, you know, because there's a school that they can go quarterback in round one, that the Giants actually do that if the player that they like is still there? I think, yeah, you, I don't think, you have to keep swinging. I mean, he's just missed too many games, and he's been too unreliable. And that's not a, I mean, that's not a personal thing. That's just the reality right here, where he's finished two of the last three years on the shelf and couldn't finish the season. And he runs a lot. Running quarterbacks get hurt, and they get hurt bad. You know, he's had neck issues right now, um, and so I, I think you got to keep swinging. You got to go find your guy. I mean, the, 
the Chiefs had Alex Smith, who was still a good quarterback, and they drafted Mahomes. Yeah. And it turned out to be the right decision. The Patriots or the, the Packers have always done this. You know, and if the quarterback that they draft isn't ready, all right, and Daniel Jones is still there, all right, so he sits for a year. Or maybe he supplants them. Who knows? But I think if one of these quarterbacks that they like is there, I honestly, like, I think you got to, you got to, like, seriously consider it. I agree. And you just mentioned the Packers there. I mean, think about how nuts this is going to sound that we could even debate this. Is it ludicrous to say the next five, seven, ten years you would take Jordan Love over Trevor Lawrence, right? Yeah. Uh, you, you probably yeah, would. from what I've seen, yes. Wow. Like, because I, 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 see, I, I see a guy that, I mean, he had nothing but puppies around him all year, rookies and second-year receivers, and all those guys improved. And the, re- the improvement of the receiving core and your class is completely – related to your quarterback play and how he gives you a chance to continue to exceed, whether it was, you know, Jaden Reed or Dontavious Wicks or, you know, Christian Watson or Romeo Dobbs. I mean, these are all kids. They're not supposed to be this good this fast, especially in an organization where there's always been uh, a pecking order about when you get a chance to become the number one. Devontae Adams waited three years, four years before he had that chance. They did it. They sped the whole process up. And you can say that Jordan Love was the reason why the process got sped up. Boldy, good spot, man. We bounced around, hit a lot of different things. I know me and Sal looking forward to uh, to leading up to this and getting to the big game. We'll talk to you next Friday. Uh, I'm, I'm probably next Tuesday. Let's do it, BT. You, I'll be in Las Vegas. Look forward yeah. to talking to you. I'm going to pull you away from the craps table. Where are you going to be in Vegas? Uh, uh, yeah. Well, yeah. I will see the craps table, yes. Yeah. But probably not while I'm talking to you. Yeah, all right, dude. We'll see you. Make sure you see some all other right. stuff, too. Find a little golf course. You know, there's a lot of things to find out there in Vegas. Hey, it's more than just, like, teaching cover, too, BT, all right? <laughs> yes. so I got you covered. I hear you, man. I got you. Thank you very much, Brian. There he is, Brian Baldinger. 